Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. John from Heroes and Legends. And yeah, we're going to talk about Rivals of Ixalan for a moment today. I know you're expecting Unstable. Don't worry, Unstable's coming. A whole lot of it this afternoon. So we got a lot of cards to talk about there. But before we get to that, Rivals of Ixalan has a preview card that was actually very exciting. We're going to take a look at it in just a second here. Over at PAX, they did a couple quick reveals. I mean, a few cards from Unstable and this one, really one of the key cards that they showed today. So let's go ahead and take a look at first what they showed prior to Vault. And that was another version of Agalta Primal Hunger. Now, this is the actual Rivals of Ixalan version. Last time we saw this card, we did a video on it a few weeks back, and we saw the promo version. So I won't talk about it all again, but I just wanted you to see the art that's in Rivals. It actually looks really, really sweet, even though this photograph isn't real high quality. All right, let's look at the new card now. Here it is, Storm the Vault, which transforms into Vault of Catlicon. Okay, so this thing is going to cost... A red, a blue, and two. It's a legendary enchantment. It's a rare. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a colorless treasure artifact token. At the beginning of your end step, if you control five or more artifacts, transform Storm of the Vaults. It becomes Vault of Catlicon, and it's a legendary land. Tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, or tap, add blue to your mana pool for each artifact you control. So, fans of Talarian Academy probably recognize that second ability there on the card. So this is a actually better version of Tolarian Academy. Once you transform it, that is. It takes a little bit to transform. You are jumping through some hoops. We'll talk about that front side in just a moment. But what's kind of nice about the back side is if you don't have any artifacts, for example, you can still tap this for mana. And it can tap for mana of any color, which is kind of nice too, because it does contribute to color fixing if you get in a situation where that's relevant. Now, if you have artifacts, then this turns into a card that can become an engine for blue mana. You can ramp with things, you can use it to use counter magic, so on and so forth. It can do a lot of different stuff for you. Now, here's the big question. Where does this card fit in? Where could it see play? Well, Storm the Vault is a little expensive and a little clunky, I think. When you look at the front side of the card, it costs four. It's a red and a blue on top of that. It makes it a little bit harder, and it's really not that strong because it is dependent on other things going on on the board state. If you can't get your creatures across for damage, you don't make the artifacts. But doesn't mean you can only make artifacts this way, obviously. If you have other, more consistent ways of doing so, then you can still maybe transform the card. So could this see standard play? I'm just going to say this. It could. It just depends on what else is in Rivals. Would it see standard play today? I don't think so. Here's the thing. We saw the take on Gaia's Cradle in the previous set. That didn't really make it into standard, even though it's a really cool card and the ramp is really strong, potentially. But the problem is, right now in Standard, we don't really have huge targets to ramp into, and the variance trying to get it to transform sometimes is a little more work than it's worth, considering you don't have a good payout. Now, that could change with the next set, or maybe the set after, or something like that. If that's the case, yeah, this could see some play. It just depends on what happens in the future. Right now, though, it doesn't really have a place, at least from what I can see. What about Modern? Well, unfortunately, I think it's a little too expensive and the front side's a little too clunky for Modern. Like, you could think Affinity deck, but if Affinity is flipping this, they're already winning the game, and really, they don't need that mana at that point. They're doing a whole other thing. So, I don't really see a forecasting cost, two different color card with this ability really working its way into Modern, unfortunately. And beyond Modern, it's going to have the same problems, too. Where this card is going to shine, and will shine pretty much immediately upon release will be Commander and Cubes, especially Commander, though. This is going to be one of those cards as a Commander player I'm going to want a copy of because I'm going to want to have access to this at some point. So maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday I'm going to want to play this card in my Commander deck, I have no doubt. So I do think that's where it's going to draw a lot of attention initially, much like Growing Rights of Itlamok did with the previous set. And I think that's where it stands right now. With that being said, that's what we know for today. It's actually the third card we've now seen previewed from the set, so we don't really know all that much. Looking forward to it, though, and it looks like it'll be a fun compliment to Exelon for sure coming this January. Just a real fast reminder, if you're looking for a way to support us, check out the description below. You'll find Patreon there, you'll find links to products on Amazon, purchases there help us, and also Flipside Gaming. They have a promo code for our viewers, hopefully save some money. they got a lot of things going on right now in the world of magic, as you know. So, until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Have a great day. 
Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.